क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द फोर्थ वीडियो इन द चैप्टर इमेज सेगमेंटेशन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक एज मॉडल्स सो अप टिल नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर कवर्ड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली द इमेज सेगमेंटेशन मीन सो हियर द इनपुट डिजिटल इमेज इज टू बी सब डिवाइडेड इनटू द वेरियस रीजंस डिपेंडिंग ऑन सर्टेन क्राइटेरिया सो इन द फैमिली ऑफ इमेज सेगमेंटेशन टेक्निक्स वी हैव फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कंसीडर्ड the detection of isolated points and in the previous video we are covered with line detection so for understanding age detections which is the next technique we are supposed to understand what exactly the several types of age models or the foundation is there so let us see the details so here we can start with our topic the age models here so our ultimate aim is to understand the age detection which is very very popular the age detectors the operators generally we list like the sobel operator previtt operator and we have the roberts operator canny operator so to understand them we require the understanding of the age models so here we begin here the topic age detection actually addresses the approaches for implementing the first and the second order digital derivatives for the detection of the ages into the images so it involves the mathematical background as well the age is actually a set of connected pixels that lie on to the boundary between the two regions what is the difference between the age and the boundary is definitely a question so let us answer this question age is actually a local concept whereas the region boundary owing to the way it is defined is a more global idea this is the difference and now we are concerned with the ages of the objects into the images either it may be the binary it may be the gray scale image it may be the color image or the multi spectral image so now a reasonable definition of such an age in any of the images requires the ability to measure the gray level transition into the meaningful way so let us start by modeling such type of the age here ideal age the first of all we take here that has the properties of the model that we can visualize in the figure a so here we have the figure a so this represents a model of ideal digital age here we have only two logic levels in this particular case so this is the lower one and this is the upper one so this is the gray level profile of the horizontal line to the image here so this is the transition the age we can see here we have the gray shade in uniformity whereas here we have on this side the complete darkness with the representation of the black color an ideal age according to the model that just now we have visualized is a set of connected pixels each of which is located at an orthogonal step transition in the gray level in a practice the optics sampling and other image acquisition imperfections yield the edges that are blurred the degree of blurring is being determined by the factors like the quality of the image acquisition system is sampling rate the illumination conditions under which the image is acquired so because of these particular points as a result the edges are more closely modeled as having a ramp like profiles so let us visualize it in terms of the figure b so here we have the figure b so a gray level profile of horizontal line to the image so here we have the ramp between the two levels here so on the extreme left we have the complete darkness by the black color on to the extreme right we have uniformity into the gray level so gray shade is represented here and at the intermediate there is a gradual transition so that is exactly represented by the ramp like structure here so the slope of this particular ramp is actually inversely proportional to the degree of blurring into the edge so in this model if you talk about the thickness of this we no longer have a thin one pixel thick path here so this length is actually determined by the slope that we have shown so this slope in turn is determined by the degree of blurring this makes the sense that the blurred edges tend to be thick and sharp edges tend to be thin 
So let us visualize a next figure, figure A, that shows the image from which the close-up in the previous figure B was extracted. And the figure B shows the horizontal gray level profile of the cage between the two regions. So this figure also shows the first and second derivatives of the gray level profile. So here we have the figures A and B. So on the left hand side we have the figure A, the two regions separated by the vertical edge that you can see at the center. So the complete dark and the complete white, it has a transition represented by the vertical edge we must say. On the right hand side if you see, so here we have the gray level profile, then we have beneath that the first derivative represented here. So that has a step like structure in between in place of the ramp and then after taking the second derivative we find the impulses onto the positive side first of all and then the negative side. So these are the details near the edge showing a gray level profile and the first and second derivatives of the profile onto the left hand side. So here the first derivative is positive at the points of transition into and out of the ramp as we move from left to right along the profile. It is constant for the points in the ramp and is zero in the areas of constant gray level. The second derivative is positive at the transition associated with the dark side of the edge. It is negative at the transition associated with the light side of the edge. It is zero along the ramp and in the areas of constant gray levels. So these are all the points you can notice on the image itself. The signs of the derivatives that we have visualized in the figure B would be reversed for the edge that transitions from light to that of the complete darkness. So let us make some conclusions from these many observations to look at that particular diagram. So the first point is the magnitude of the first derivative can be used to detect the presence of the edge at a point in the image. The second, the sign of the second derivative can be used to determine whether an edge pixel lies on the dark or light side of an edge. Two additional properties can also be made for the second derivative around the edge. So these properties are, first one, it produces two values for every edge in all image, that is an undesirable feature. And the second is an imaginary straight line joining the extreme positive and negative values of the second derivative would cross the zero near the midpoint of the edge. The zero crossing property of the second derivative is quite useful for locating the centers of the thick edges. Some edge models make use of the smooth transition into and out of the ramp. So the edge models with regard, we take one example, the edges shown into the previous of the two figures were actually free of the noise. Now the image segments in the first column in the next figure show the close-ups of the four ramp edges separating a black regions onto the left and white regions onto the right. So this is the caption to the figure and here we make the figure part A we can say the first column representing the image and gray level profile of the ramp edge corrupted by the random Gaussian noise of the mean value equal to zero. Generally we represent the mean value by the Greek symbol mu and the variance can be denoted by sigma square here the sigma value is equal to 0, 0.0. The second column that is the middle one represents the first derivative of the image and the gray level profile. The third column that is on the extreme right represents the second derivative image and the gray level profile. <coughs> Next to that we have another that is figure B. So this is the visualization. Again, we have the three columns. The first column is representing the image and the gray level profile of the ramp edge. Here, this time it is corrupted by the random Gaussian noise of the mean value mu is equal to zero. But the sigma value that is for the representing the sigma square as the variance has the value 0 0.1 as compared to the earlier one. This is the change. Again, the second column and third column are the same representing the second and the first derivatives from right to left hand side. So you can definitely 
notice the changes as we switch from noise free condition to that of the noisy condition there are several fluctuations you can see into the representations for the cases of first and second derivatives now this is the third figure so this represents again the first column with the image and gray level profile of the ramp cage that is again corrupted but this time the mean value mu is equal to 0 it is the same constant value but the variance with respect to the sigma so sigma holds the value 1.0 so as compared to the earlier cases the sigma value has been increased the variation variance you can definitely see that has been increased hence in the second column if you notice the first derivative image and the gray level profile as compared to the earlier slide we show the noise into it so graphically as well as in the image form in the spatial domain of the 2 by 2 dimensions you can definitely notice the changes of course it is the same for the second derivative image and the gray level profile on to the extreme right hand side that is the third column now this is the last figure in this particular sequence that represents again the three columns the first column image and the gray level profile of the ramp cage corrupted by the random gaussian noise having the same mean value equal to 0 but sigma here it is very very increased that is 10 times so it holds the value 10.0 here the second column represents the corresponding first derivative image and the gray level profile whereas the third column represents second derivative of the image and the gray level profile so the first image is free of noise the other three images in the first column of the figure are corrupted by the gaussian noise that we first of all saw for the mean value 0 and the standard derivation varying from 0.1 then 1.0 then 10.0 the graph that has shown below each of these particular images for the values of mean and variance is gray level profile of the horizontal scan line passing through the image the images into the second column are of the first order derivatives of the images on to the left hand side and let us consider for example the center image at the first case the derivative is zero in the constant black and white regions these are the two black areas shown in the derivative image you can notice the derivative of the constant ramp is a constant equal of the slope of the ramp this constant area in the derivative image is shown in the gray shed here so as we move down the center column the derivatives become increasingly different from the noiseless case in fact it would be difficult to associate that last profile in that particular column with the ramp cage so what makes these results interesting is the noise really is almost invisible in the images on to the left hand side column but it is present there the last image is a slightly grainy because of the noise but this corruption is almost imperceptible these examples are good illustrations of the sensitivity of the derivatives of the noise as expected the second derivative is even more sensitive to the noise the second derivative of the noiseless image is shown in the top and right image the thin black and white lines are the positive and negative components the gray in these images represent the zero due to the purpose of scaling now we know that only the noisy second derivative that resembles the noiseless case is the one corresponding to noise with a standard deviation of 0.1 gray levels the other two second derivative images and profiles clearly illustrate that it would be difficult indeed to detect their positive and negative components which are truly useful features of the second derivative in terms of the age detection the fact that fairly little noise can have such a significant impact on the two key derivatives used for the age detection in images is an important issue to keep in mind in particular image smoothing should be a serious consideration prior to the use of derivatives in the applications where noise with levels similar to those we have just discussed is likely to be present so let us make the conclusion here 
So we have the two points. The first point to be classified as a meaningful age point. The transition in the gray level associated with that point has to be significantly stronger than the background at the point. Secondly, we have the method of choice to determine whether the value is significant or not is to use a threshold. Thus, here we define a point in the image as being an age point if its two dimensional first order derivative is greater than a specified threshold. A set of such points that are connected according to the predefined criterion of the connectness is by definition an age. So this makes the definition of the age. The term we have another in the sense age segment. It is generally used if the age is in short length and in relation to the dimensions of the complete image. An alternate definition if we elect to use the second derivative is simply to define the age points in an image as the zero crossing of its second derivative. If the definitions do not guarantee the success in finding the ages in the image, they simply gives us the formalism to look for them. First order derivatives in an image are computed using the gradient. The second order derivatives are obtained using the Laplacian. So with the understanding of the gradient and Laplacian we have covered earlier, we shall be proceeding to understand what exactly the age detection is. So the three types of techniques after the detection of isolated points, line detection, we shall be covering age detection in the next lecture. So I suppose you are definitely benefited by the knowledge we share for the subject digital image processing. If you want to have some more information, more clarity in the concepts of this subject, if you want to practice hands-on with the practical sessions and the miscellaneous problem practice, you can definitely do by subscribing eGIDA channel. Thank you.